My name is Z. I lived with my best friend Gwen. We've been together since we were young and ran away from our foster home. Things were working well until I met my next door neighbor. His name was Adam. He was too handsome for me to ignore. I fell head over heels for him at first sight. One day I worked up the courage to go over to his place to introduce myself. When I reached Adam's house, his front door was already open. I walked inside and called out his name, but I heard no response. Suddenly, I heard a growl behind me, and I froze. It sounded deep, like it belonged to an enormous dog. When I turned around, I shrieked like a maniac. There was a tiger behind me, a freaking tiger. I screamed again, walking backwards, falling over the couch. I jumped up and tried to run, but the tiger was blocking the door. Suddenly, Adam appeared with a huge stick in his hand. Then he shot it with a tranquilizer gun. The moment the tiger fell, I fainted with relief. My entire world turning black. I woke up to Adam giving me CPR. I felt his hands on my chest, his lips on mine. I woke up gasping, reaching for my inhaler. I was having an asthma attack. Once I became stable, Adam got me some water. I forced him to explain himself to me as soon as I got the courage to speak again. He told me that he was a smuggler. He brought in tigers from abroad and he sold them to rich people living here in our city. He brought them here from the docks in his truck and stored them in the basement. There were five tigers in his house at the moment. One of them got out due to rot in the walls. I couldn't make sense of this. How much money could a tiger possibly get him? Could it really be enough to risk being eaten alive? Adam told me that one tiger could go for millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions. I was amazed at this news, with the sale of only one of these animals. This was the kind of money that one could not pass up on. I told Adam that I knew that this operation was highly illegal. If he didn't want me to rat him out, he would have to give me something. He would have to allow me to join his business and get my own share of the sales. At first, he was unsure, unwilling to be blackmailed. I told him about my experience managing my own business, to show him I could be valuable. Eventually, he agreed that he could use a second set of hands, and he was already searching for help. Having his neighbor help him would be convenient, too. He agreed to my terms, and I went home for the evening. The next day, I joined Adam's tiger smuggling trade. Every night at 7 p.m., a buyer would stop by. Adam was extremely careful and only allowed one buyer to visit him each day. The buyers were enormously wealthy. A sheik, a princess of an unknown island, a business tycoon. My bank account began to swell up very quickly. I loved my life so much at that time. I could work beside my crush every day. Adam and I flirted endlessly and even made out on some breaks. I could suddenly afford things I could never even dream of purchasing before. I decorated my house, got all new gadgets, and even bought my roommate Gwen a whole new wardrobe. Gwen was shocked to see how much money I was blowing. She knew I wasn't from a rich family. She knew how much money I made. I know I should have been careful and spent less money around Gwen in order to keep a low profile, but I couldn't help myself. It was my first time being so unbelievably wealthy. Gwen's suspicions grew stronger. She started asking me where I was making all this money. She demanded to know what I was doing in Adam's house every day. I told her that I was dating Adam and that Adam was from a very rich family and so he liked to spoil his girlfriends. Gwen seemed satisfied with that answer, so I moved on. I underestimated her. One day when Adam and I were working down in his basement, Gwen sneaked into his house. She had decided to investigate Adam. She was suspicious of some rich guy spending too much money on her friend for ulterior motives. Unfortunately, we left the coat closet open, which is where the basement door lay. Gwen came downstairs and found us in the basement, surrounded by tigers locked in cages. Gwen demanded to know what the hell was going on. We had no choice but to tell her the whole truth. She had caught us red-handed. Unlike me, Gwen was really freaked out by our illegal activities. She wanted to go to the police immediately, and Adam pulled out his gun to stop her. The scene could have turned grisly, but I managed to convince Gwen not to rat us out. I asked her to join our business instead. Adam was hesitant, but I told him that with Gwen on board, we could hide tigers in our basement as well. One buyer could come to each house per day as planned, but our profits would double. Adam fell in love with the idea then. Gwen was convinced when she heard of the spectacular amount of money she'd receive. Business went smooth and steady for weeks after that day. Adam began to transfer twice as many tigers a week from the docks to the houses. He was the only one allowed to do that. He maintained that only he knew how to handle the tigers and keep them calm. Gwen wanted to go check out the docks, but Adam refused, saying he didn't want to spook out his dealer. The dealer only worked with him. I was fine with that, but Gwen was not. She thought it was weird that Adam wouldn't take us to see the docks where the tigers were brought in. She also thought it was strange that Adam agreed to split his profits with us instead of silencing us with a one-time payment or with his gun. I promised her that Adam was not a killer. Gwen wasn't convinced. She suggested that perhaps the tigers cost a lot more than Adam was saying. Perhaps he was making a secret profit without our knowledge, using our labor to make extra money from us. Gwen and I waited for a day when Adam was out and we sneaked into his house. 
I knew that Adam wasn't cheating us, but I had no issues with confirming the price of these tigers online. We needed pictures of them to make sure we got the right quote. We reached the basement and began to click photos quickly. One of the tigers was acting strange. It seemed to be puking. It was crouching weirdly and gagging, but nothing was coming out. Suddenly, the tiger retched loudly, and a packet slipped out of its mouth. I stared at the gross, sloppy item on the floor. It was a small plastic bag full of diamonds. I couldn't believe my eyes. But Gwen was right. Adam wasn't just smuggling tigers into the country. He was also smuggling diamonds. And he was lying to me about it. That one packet of diamonds alone could get Adam a cool billion dollars. He had been fooling us this whole time, giving us a few measly millions while pocketing more money than we could ever dream of. I couldn't believe that he was lying to me. It stung so bad. Here I was thinking that we were becoming partners in work and life, but he was just using me. I knew we had to do something to take control of the situation. Gwen wanted to back out. She said she didn't want to mess with some dangerous diamond smuggler. She said that these are the kinds of people that shot others for money. I didn't want to give up. I couldn't. I was going to have my revenge on Adam for his betrayal. I told Gwen that I had a plan with which we could keep the business and get rid of Adam. When she asked me what I was planning, I responded simply, We had to set all of Adam's tigers loose, right on the street. Gwen called me crazy. Those tigers could hurt anyone, old people, children. We couldn't be responsible for that kind of loss. I told her she could go back to our house and take a picture of one of the tigers leaving. She could use that picture to warn the neighborhood. Animal control would arrive soon enough. The animals would be gone and so would Adam. We could take over his old clients with the tigers in our house. No one would be hurt and we would win. Gwen was uncertain, but I was sure. I had spent too long waiting for my crush to make me feel important. Gwen and I went to the basement. We sanitized the entire place, removing all our fingerprints from the surfaces we touched for months. Then we left the room and used the remotes to open up the tiger cages one by one. We let out all five tigers in Adam's apartment and raced out the back door. We snuck into our house through the yard, making sure to avoid the neighborhood cameras at all times. We called the police and animal control, both of which showed up in no time. The tigers were apprehended and caged before the end of the day. No one was injured, though many people were dearly frightened. Gwen and I were congratulated and celebrated for a quick warning on social media that allowed people to barricade themselves in their houses before the tiger attack. The police captured Adam and took him into interrogation for the incident. I knew what Adam was going to do now. I knew he would tell the police all about me collaborating with him. He would tell them about the tigers hidden in my basement and my history as his partner. As I predicted, the police showed up to my house later that night. They came in full force with the search warrant in hand. Gwen and I let them in. Just as we planned, they searched the entire house and found nothing. They went with us into the basement and saw nothing other than old laundry. They were confused, as Adam's testimony had sounded really solid. But I assured them that Gwen and I were upstanding, moral citizens who would never partake in something so strictly illegal. I told them that Adam had a crush on me for a very long time, and he was angry that I had not only rejected his advances, but it was my tip online that got him caught. The police had no choice but to believe me. After all, they had no evidence to say otherwise. Before the police arrived at my house, Gwen and I had moved the tigers we had hidden. We were rich now. We were not the same broke girls without resources from a few months ago. We had connections. We moved the tigers to a farm nearby and sanitized the entire basement so no chemical evidence of their existence could be found. I had stolen Adam's phone and contacted all his clients as their new source. Then I used his phone's location history to find his dealer. This way, we took over Adam's business while he sat in federal prison. Expensive tigers hiding priceless diamonds. Gwen and I had never held a more powerful job. We were like the kingpins of our town, hiding in our modest house and living like queens. We could buy whatever we wanted, go wherever we wished, and have whoever we craved. We wanted to avoid suspicion, so we continued to stay in our old house. From the inside, we did it up better than a luxury hotel. Life was perfect, until the day Adam was let out of prison. He'd gotten out early due to good behavior and community service. This was terrible news for Gwen and I. I was scared that he could come back like a ghost haunting us for ruining his life. Over the last few years, as the police had forgotten us, Gwen and I began to store tigers at the house once more. I was suspicious that Adam would tip off the police and send them here again, now that he was free. Gwen said we couldn't be sure he would do that. She wondered if Adam would return to us and try to make things work. I scoffed at her hope. I had sent Adam to jail, so why wouldn't he try to do the same to me? I knew we had to make plans to get rid of the tigers before Adam could rat us out. Gwen and I quickly got to moving the tigers to our farm. As we loaded one of the cages into our truck, a small mishap caused the door to break open as it slammed onto the ground. Neither of us saw it coming and the tiger leapt from the cage like a beast, kicking the gate open. The force of the gate slamming against me sent me flying against the ground. It knocked my lights out and I fainted. 
my world fading to black. Seconds later, I felt hands on my chest, thumping. I felt soft lips touching mine and I opened my eyes. Adam was sitting over me, giving me CPR. After all these years, he was here, saving me again. I looked around me and saw that the tigers were gone. I asked Adam where they were. Gwen said that Adam helped her move the tigers back into our basement. She said that they didn't need to shift the tigers to the farm anymore. When I accused Adam of sabotaging our plan, Gwen stopped me. She said she wanted me to stop assuming the worst about Adam that he was a better person than I had imagined, and he was here to bury the hatchet. Maybe we could move on from the years of ugliness and work together again, Gwen suggested. What the hell was she talking about? I was completely confused. Why was Gwen being so partial to Adam? Why were they both exchanging looks with each other? What was going on? Gwen walked over to Adam and took his hand in hers. Then she told me her secret. She and Adam had been writing letters to each other while he was in prison. She said they had fallen in love with each other. Gwen had been uncertain about whether Adam would come back for her after prison. He had proven himself, however. He was here and not for revenge. He wanted to be with her and she wanted to be with him, in work and in life. I had never been more shocked in my life, and I have been through some really shocking things. I felt utterly betrayed. Gwen knew that I'd had a crush on Adam for the longest time. She also knew how Adam had lied to us about the diamonds. She said she didn't care, that Adam had explained all of it. She said it was normal for Adam or anyone else to not want to share their profits with strangers right away. She said that it was I who was wrong for getting Adam thrown in jail instead of talking to him about it. I couldn't believe Gwen was really taking the side of this strange criminal over her best friend. Gwen assured me that everything would be fine that the three of us would work together again just like old times. It wasn't going to be like old times. I knew that. Gwen and Adam started their own life. They soon got married and Gwen even got pregnant. She literally stole my boyfriend and shacked up with him. I no longer fit into their life nor their business. I decided to separate myself from them and I embezzled money into some more legal projects. The moment I began to make a sizable profit with these projects, I quit the smuggling business. I no longer wanted to look at Gwen and Adam and know that I was alone. Even though I quit, I couldn't get them out of my head. The jealousy was driving me insane. Why did Gwen get to have the life that I wanted, that I deserved? I wanted to take it away from her. It was I who had truly boosted their business. It was I who had secured profits from Adam all those years ago. Without me, Gwen wouldn't even have a business to split. I decided to make a plan to rat them out, to have them arrested and keep the business for myself. I found a man named Jeeves, a bounty hunter who helped frame people for copious amounts of money. I paid him off and told him what I needed to get done. I told him about the tigers and how we would have to transport them before we framed Gwen and Adam. Jeeves and I formed a plan and he came over to my house to execute it. We were going to Gwen and Adam's house and then we would call the cops from their basement saying we discovered hidden tigers. Adam already had priors. They would believe us without a doubt. When we finally met up with Adam and Gwen in their house, I got my phone out to call the police. I didn't need to. We were already surrounded by the police. I just didn't know it yet. Once we were all in the same room, Jeeves pulled out his gun and revealed his true identity to us. He was a detective, sniffing out a tiger smuggling ring here in our city. He had recorded every single thing I had told him, and he had enough proof to arrest all three of us for animal cruelty and the destruction of a hundred other state and federal laws. The police jumped out of the shadows and arrested all three of us. I couldn't believe my fate, and I couldn't stomach how careless I had been. I had vetted Jeeves, but clearly I hadn't done it thoroughly enough. I was so eager to get what I wanted that I let my guard down. I was tossed into federal prison. Gwen and Adam testified against me, saying it was me who owned the business all along. They told them how I had released tigers all those years ago to frame Adam. They said I had forced them to work with me for years and threatened to kill them and their child if they tried to back out. I was filled with so much rage at this fake testimony that I began to scream at them with anger during the trial. The judge made the cops seize me and send me back to my cell. My cell has been my home for 10 years now. Gwen and Adam did minimal time. After all, no one wanted to take a child's parents away from it. I was blamed for everything that happened, and it was I that did the time. I was tortured by rage and loneliness in my cell, furious that with all my power and strength, I could not destroy my crush and my best friend.